Other people are so overrated. Many of life's great pleasures can be achieved on your own. Reading a great book, staying in on a Friday night to eat your own body weight in pizza, cutting off all social contact to dedicate every waking hour to GTA 5. Playing a brilliant single-player game is the ultimate form of escapism, and the following all-time greats offer existing eating solo modes. Abandon those friend lists, cut out any upcoming social engagements, and indulge in the very best shark-possessing, xenomorph barbecuing, penguin-punishing solo gaming exploits ever. In no particular order, these are the 10 best single-player games on PC. Is that a gravity gun in your pocket, or are you just pleased to see us? Oh, it really is a physics-defying firearm. Okay, carry on. It may be getting on in years, but Half-Life 2 still stands out as one of the most sublime solo experiences on PC. Valve's source engine looks like it can now comfortably run on a pocket calculator by modern standards, yet despite those geriatric graphics, few modern single-player games come close to matching this legendary shooter's impeccable pacing. Whether being backed up by an adorable murdery android pooch or bombing around the beaches on a buggy, the Freeman's pioneering PC request remains one of the greatest games of all time. City 17 will make your skin shiver, Ravenholm remains riveting, and Alex Vance is still the best combat buddy of all time. Gordon, you done good. Dr. Freeman, I presume. In space, no one can hear you sob uncontrollably into your keyboard. Alien Isolation isn't just arguably the single scariest video game ever, it's also one of the best single-player experiences of the past decade. Providing your idea of a good time involves your nerves being torn to shreds by an intergalactic beastie with personal space issues. Such is the reverence Creative Assembly has for Ridley Scott's peerless 70s horror classic, every facet of Alien Isolation oozes with authenticity. The claustrophobic confines of Sevastopol act as a dead ringer for the iconic sets of Alien Nostromo. Whether nodding in approval at dead-on drinking birds or getting goosebumps catching that first sight of the derelict and its doomed space jockey, licensed games don't come any more electrifying. Isolation offers a terrifying, intoxicating sensory experience like nothing else. Just heed our advice and keep that flamethrower close. Saucy and sorrowful, murderous and meticulous, sprawling and superbly scripted, single-player games are rarely as life-affirming as The Witcher 3. Give Geralt an inch and the adventures of this lusty, cantankerous monster hunter will take over your life. Decapitate drowners, earn coin from Witcher contracts, sail into the unknown, take on strange fantasy quests involving elegant enchantresses and MacGuffin masks mingle with tree monsters, hate on harpies, admire the charming cobbles of Novigrad. No matter how you choose to spend your time in The Witcher 3, almost every second of this eclectic, gargantuan RPG is captivating. With dozens of hours of side quests to delve into, an involving main story, and one of the most likeable leads in all of games, The Witcher 3 is that rarest of things, a modern AAA epic brimming with soul. Your words alone, not enough. Good things really do come in small, slightly sociopathic packages. Valve's beguiling puzzler may only offer a single night's entertainment, but in those two hours, Portal shows more ingenuity and charm than most games do in 20. Tasked with scurrying through a series of test chambers operated by an increasingly unstable AI, you have to rely on your wits and a reality-ripping sci-fi gun to solve Portal's ingenious puzzles. Combining physics fun and extra cuddly companion cubes, the game's conundrums rarely repeat a trick and will constantly stimulate your noggin. Yet what elevates Portal into the truly elite single-player experience is one GLaDOS. In this mischievous, murderous supercomputer, Valve created one of the all-time great video game villains, a Sahara Dry nemesis who's part HAL from 2001 A Space Odyssey, part malignant Nurse Ratchet. Oh, and Portal has the most disgustingly hummable end credits ever conceived. Enjoy. Like trying to salsa with a sumo wrestler, Dark Souls 3 is hugely challenging and a little bit unsightly. While From Software's super tough hack and slash isn't the most eye arousing game around, it is one of the most effortlessly intoxicating single player PC games you can buy. 
Thanks to a beautifully balanced combat model, fights in Dark Souls 3 are a tense yet constantly exciting dance with death. Even the smallest victories in the land of Lothric don't come easy, let alone the supreme challenge that awaits with the game's conga line of increasingly intimidating bosses. When you do start consistently conquering those armies of gothic monsters though, the sense of satisfaction is like nothing else on PC. And unlike the genre-defining original Dark Souls, the sequel delivers up a terrific, lovingly crafted PC port. Death has never tasted so delicious. Odd, original, and tinged with a starkly sad story, What Remains of Edith Finch is one of the most memorable indie games in years. Following the story of America's most unfortunate family, this clever walking sim tracks the movements of the lone surviving Finch, Edith Jr., as she explores the lonely halls of her abandoned home. The genius of Giant Sparrow's inventive ambler is that it throws a unique, self-contained story at Edith's shuffling shoes every 10 minutes. And if you don't want spoilers, skip ahead now. As you read the memoirs of dead family members, Edith is forced to relive a series of bizarre, bite-sized tales. One moment you'll control Molly Finch as the ravenous nipper transforms between a cat, owl and shark while trying to satiate her hunger. The next, you're escaping into a fantasy dreamland as a disillusioned teen trying to forget his fish-gutting job. There's even an amazing Michael Myers Halloween tribute in there too. Edith Finch is one of the most interesting, imaginative single-player games you'll ever get to play. A lot of this isn't going to make sense, and I'm sorry about that. Picking a favourite between Batman, Arkham Asylum and Arkham City is like choosing between being stuck in a lift with the Joker or French kissing Penguin for 30 minutes straight. Either way, both choices are going to hurt. And as much as we love the chilling intimacy of Gotham's gothic nuthouse, it's the captivating sprawl of Arkham City that makes it one of the greatest single-player games around. Gliding above the gaudy streets of Gotham is a constant thrill, while the game's mesmerising fisticuffs and predator stealth sections remain as moorish as ever. Turns out Bats has some ludicrously sturdy thighs. With a fascinating story that delves into demented duplicity at the heart of the Joker and Batman's relationship like never before, intriguing new spins on beloved villains, and several kick-ass Catwoman cameos, Arkham City is the single-player hero we all deserve. Hideo Kojima's undisputed stealth classic is also, somewhat bizarrely, perhaps the least Kojima game the legendary designer has ever made. Gone are the waffling, hour-long cutscenes of Snake's past adventures, now replaced by succinct radio messages that convey MGS5's stripped-down plot in an efficient fashion. But while those trademark, ear-chewing monologues may be history, the Phantom Pain remains a game replete with classically bizarre codge touches. Order Naked Snake's horse to defecate on command, and then use the subsequent pony poop to make an enemy jeep crash. Battle teleporting snipers in a sweltering jungle. Zip about in your own personal mini Metal Gear while your sneaky shins are all tuckered out. MGS5 has countless daft mechanics, all designed to make you grin like a goon. Combining two bumper-sized stealth sandbox playgrounds to explore and beautifully directed cinematics, MGS5 is both a supreme sneaker and one of the greatest single-player games on PC. I'm sure your conscience will tell you what to do. It's only natural that the best open world about would also be one of the most essential single-player games. Rockstar's SoCal-inspired sandbox serves up a dizzyingly varied experience that squashes the notion that all you do in GTA is cruise around dishing out drive-bys. Take a selfie with Franklin's pet Rottweiler, pretend to play Happy Families with Michael, watch Trevor do the very bad thing to GTA 4's Johnny, scale the Vinewood sign, take in one of those amazing Rage Engine sunsets, switch between a trio of crooks in a daring daytime kidnap, plan and pull off murderous, multi-layered heists, swim with orcas, hell, you can even play a ruddy good golf minigame while wearing a tux. No other open world offers such a varied, criminal checklist of activities to tick off. If you love life-swallowing solo adventures, GTA 5 is as must-buy as they come. <coughs> Lara's rebooted Siberian sequel is one of the finest single-player action adventures you'll find on PC. Combining super-stabby, stealth-driven combat with pleasingly ambling challenge tombs, Rise of the Tomb Raider strikes a great balance between punchy action and laid-back exploration. 
It's also one of the most accomplished PC ports of the last few years, boasting all manner of graphics settings to tweak in a game that's both lovely to look at and utterly engrossing to play. It merges sandbox hubs with more linear action segments, and the game proves equally adept at serving up chicken-catching side quest distractions as it does screen-shaking set pieces. Admittedly, the plot is still as bland as a bowl of steamed celery, axing bears in the face, scrambling for Lara's life, downing drones, or solving satisfying tombs. We doubt you'll moan about Crofty's muddled motivations. Thanks. So there we are, 10 of the best single-player games you'll ever see on PC. Do you think any of our choices don't belong? Are you sour about us missing out one of your favourite solo campaigns? Then respectfully disagree with our picks in the comments below. As ever, please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to Logitech G for more content just like this, and be sure to call your loved ones at least once every few months to remind them The Witcher 3 hasn't swallowed up your entire existence.